So, like I said, you have to uh, choose this V T zero X zero such that this happens. Okay, all right. Um, now, like I said, I am claiming it's possible to choose a delta such that the supremum of this guy for over norm x less than delta does satisfy this. Okay, so. Uh, so how do you claim this? So this requires a little bit of your real analysis type knowledge, um, but it's not too complicated to grasp. Hmm? Uh, first thing is, uh, I want to just use this notation which to, to describe uh, this function. Yeah. So this is vt0 subscript t0x is just the function vt0x. It's just notation, not a big deal, just to make my life uh, easy to write things. So you know that vt0 0 is basically this guy and that's exactly 0, yes? And you also know that vt0 is continuous which means that this function is continuous in x, okay? This is an assumption, in fact it's c1, you assume that this is a c1 function and whenever I said it's a c1 function, it's c1 in both arguments technically. Hmm? So it has to be c1 in this guy also, so definitely continuous in x, hmm? alright? So the good thing is you have let's look at this picture okay this picture right here you know how this uh, function works right v does not have to be an increasing function or anything it just has to dominate this class k function alpha norm x square in this case we've already seen this picture right yeah on the x axis there is norm x and on the y axis there is value of v all right now what do i want i want this v to lie within this range Right? I hope this is visible, if not, I just make this bigger. So, I want V to lie in this range, right? So, what range does it give me on norm x? First of all, uh, you have to be relatively convinced that this is a good picture and a representative picture. Yeah? There is no such thing, I mean, yeah, don't even try this, don't do proof by picture in any uh, exam. Huh? I am using the picture only to support, uh, help you understand. All I am trying to show from this picture is that this red guy is any continuous function, remember, okay, which means what? Which means that if this is any continuous function huh, and you notice that the value I have taken is alpha epsilon 1 square, right? So this is basically, you know that x equal to epsilon 1 will satisfy this, right? At x equal to epsilon 1, this function will have this value, okay? So, so the important thing to remember is that this is a continuous function, so it must take all values within a range, okay? It must take all values within a range, alright? So it has to also take the value alpha epsilon 1 square, this is basically the intermediate function theorem, huh? intermediate value theorem, sorry not intermediate function theorem. The intermediate value theorem. Basically, it says that if you have a continuous function which maps a b to you know p q, then it has to the the function has to take all values between p and q. It can't just miss some value simply because it's a continuous function. I hope this is intuitively clear. Of course, there is proofs of it, but intuitively also it's evident, right? So, so remember that this alpha epsilon one square, okay, is is within the range of the function, within the image of the function. So this value also has to be taken, but in any case, we are not even interested in alpha epsilon one square. Right? The important thing is we are interested in something below it. Hmm? Okay? We are interested in something below it. Okay? So what am I now going to say? I am only looking for uh, the value of the function to be here. Yeah. So although I've written it, so I am going to define a set. Hmm? I'm going to define a set E which is just this horizontal line by the way, by this. What is this set? It's just taking the range, this is open set by the way, minus alpha epsilon 1 square to alpha epsilon 1 square. This is an open set, I hope this is clear to you. 
this is an open set hmm? and I am taking its inverse image under V T0. Okay, so this is actually uh, let me not say this is V T Z T X, but this is actually V T zero X because we are only interested in doing our analysis for V T zero X. We don't care about V T X in general. We are not varying time. We are just fixing time at T zero, and when we are looking at that function, because I just want to bound uh, V T zero X. That's my job right now. So this plot is just for V T zero X. Okay, I hope that's simple and clear. That way I can also make this kind of a plot because if time is also changing then I can't make this kind of a plot. We already discussed this. So I am creating this set E as V T0 inverse of this open set. Okay. Alright. Now from your analysis course I hope or whatever analysis class you have seen, you know that if you have a continuous function and you take the inverse of a open set under a continuous function, then the inverse is also an open set. Hmm? So open set taken the inverse under a continuous function, then E is also an open set. Hmm? This is a fact of analysis. In fact, uh, most of us do the in real analysis, most of us do things the other way around. This is actually the definition of open sets in a topological sense. This is actually the definition of open sets. Uh, in analysis we do it differently we uh, we say the definition is something else and then we derive this as a theorem typically but in reality this is the definition and what you define in analysis courses as open sets is a theorem okay so this flipped version but the basic point is both are equivalent okay so if you take an open set take its inverse under any continuous function it has to be an open set yeah Disaster. Day. All right. Okay. All right. Great. Um, but for us, the thing to remember pictorially is very simple. This open set E is just this guy. Now I know you are mighty confused because I used minus alpha epsilon one and plus alpha epsilon one huh? here and here. But the point is, my intersection is still this set. Yeah, I hope you understand because there is no image here on this side for V. Okay, so the inverse of this set under V is still does this set only because there is nothing in the bottom half at all. So V is defined in that way. Okay, I've just why have why have I used it in this way because I'm just trying to make it look simpler, right? In the sense that it is uh, it is actually looking like an open set. In fact, we are talking about relative open sets, but I am not going to even discuss that. Huh? So the idea is the inverse under V T0 of this set is only this set. Okay, it is exactly this set. It is basically the set norm x less than delta. Norm x less than delta. Why? Because I have open here, open here. So I have open here. Okay. Not open here. No, that's wrong. It's open here, open here. This gives me a set which is open here. Still contains the origin. Okay. Still contains the origin. Remember that. Yeah, because origin is contained in this set. In the vertical set, yeah, just in this picture, the vertical set contains the origin. Therefore, the horizontal set also contains the origin. Okay, because 0 maps to 0, V T0, 0 is 0. Huh? So, origin is contained in this set. That should not be in, in any contention. Okay, so that is what I am saying. This set E is open and it contains the origin. Okay. Okay, and this set is just basically this guy, and this quantity is what gives me the delta. This length is what gives me the delta. So basically, such a delta has to exist, huh? just by continuity, just by continuity of the function v t zero. Okay, such a delta has to exist. 
all right so this is the cool thing about lot of mathematical results it is not constructive i'm not actually giving you a value of delta and you can't i can't for me to give you an actual value of delta i will need uh, the dynamics i will need the v we need so many things right? i can't give you the actual struct value of delta but i know that this delta exists just by continuity of this vt zero so you see all the ingredients of our lyapunov theorems how do they get used it's rather nice okay great uh, so good so you know that zero is e is open and zero is contained in e hmm? excellent i have drawn another picture so whenever i teach this analysis type course i this uh, structures mathematical structures course i make a lot of pictures they are very helpful in following things yeah so if you have this set e i am saying origin is contained in this set e and i am saying e is an open set hmm? okay now i know that this may not directly give you a delta but this picture seems to indicate it gives a delta in metric spaces it's very easy yes this gives a delta but even if you are not convinced i still have an exact delta with norm x less than delta uh, it's not difficult to follow because see why i am making this another picture is just to uh, generalize it to functions of the form phi norm of x hmm? right now you had what i had taken a special case right that phi norm of x is actually alpha norm x squared it's a special case but if it's not this special case then your e might be in some funny shape it may not be in a ball shape okay and if e is not a, if e is not in a ball shape no problem because origin is inside this open set okay and the definition of an open set is what anybody how do you define an open set a set is open if hmm no that is to just uh, something you've depicted in your mind yeah. Huh. absolutely okay basically if you take any element of the set there exists a ball around that point which is also inside the set so since origin is inside the set there exists a ball which is also inside the set okay and this is my delta ball done i got my delta ball so even if i take the general case here i took the special case so i immediately got a ball norm x less than delta but even if i take the general case where my e no longer looks like a ball it looks like some kind of an ellipsoid typically you will have ellipsoid or whatever you may have some crazy shape nobody cares it could be this i don't care what it is yeah but the point is because it's an open set and the origin is inside that set there exists a delta ball which is contained in the set okay so that's it whenever x0 is less than delta whenever i'm inside this ball i'm inside the e set and if i'm inside the e set my vt0 can map me only inside this value right because if i take this to the other side vt0 of e is has to lie within this range okay so i'm done i have just proven that if i take norm x0 less than delta vt0 is always less than alpha epsilon 1 square okay okay so this is a very analysis based proof so just think that you followed you think you followed great if not ask me okay very simple we constructed an e open set by taking inverse and this is why you remember i told you inverse of the v functions are involved okay okay all right okay so uh, so again so there is a lot of subtle point that i don't talk about Uh, but i hope you understand this first just take the e set which is the inverse of this open set so i constructed an e set now within the e set i know i can get a delta ball so all my initial conditions starting inside that delta ball are inside the e set and because they are inside the e set they can never map me out of alpha epsilon 1 square huh? so the delta is obviously a conservative ball remember huh? this could be very small but who cares we need to just satisfy the stability definition nobody asked us what is the delta huh? so so basically i have just proved that vt0 x0 will be within alpha epsilon 1 square if you start in this place excellent we are done 
what are the subtle points here this has anybody caught any subtle points we, remember we we said that positive definiteness is required if 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 you have uh if you don't have radial unboundedness you can't do global things hmm? where does that play a role in here and this is the stability we said i guess it doesn't play any role here but anyway suppose i had suppose i gave you a radially unbounded v or or a uh, globally positive definite v forget radial unbounded suppose i gave you a globally positive definite v that is this br was not there then what would change in this proof this is a good way to learn proofs by the way huh? to see where your assumptions went if i change something tweak something a little bit what happens so if i gave you a positive definite v that is globally positive definite that is it is positive definite for all r similarly v dot is negative definite for all, negative semi definite for all r what will change in the proof what will change in the proof we can take no need for epsilon 1 i don't need to define any epsilon 1 hmm? that is the change okay so when you give me any epsilon there is no longer an r or anything hmm? there is just epsilon directly work with epsilon that's the only difference here but the stability result doesn't change at all ha huh? remember to obtain stability uh, positive definiteness locally is enough as long as you are working in the local range in the r range ha huh? beyond that that's a problem how do you think we um, do you think we are guaranteeing somehow that uh, we are within the r ball because i said right trajectories have to is assume they are within r ball otherwise i have a problem nothing works right because i don't have positive definiteness i don't have negative semi definite my proof is irrelevant beyond the r ball right because i don't even have positive definiteness so all the arguments i used are ridiculous how or if uh, how or whether am i enforcing or guaranteeing staying in the r ball am i doing that in any place or am i just assuming it e god's grace or whatever good fortune ha huh. initial condition is within r ball where do i say that initial condition is within r ball t not yes we are starting at t not not from t at at time t not now no i didn't say anything about r i only said delta right where is r coming up r is coming in epsilon 1 right now am i somehow saying that you know that that i will am i somehow also proving without actually talking about it that i'm going to stay within the r ball why is this complicated what have i proved in the end what have i proved say that again that i proved in the next screen correct here that is that vt not next not is less than alpha epsilon 1 square correct but i used that to prove something else no and that was not the key thing that i wanted to prove what did i end up proving here say that again ha what is the upper bound epsilon 1 not square right i mean i can get rid of the square here right but this but but norm x less than epsilon 1 means that norm x is less than equal to epsilon right but it means something else also right what else ha huh? which ball r ball right because norm x less than equal to epsilon 1 means that it is less than equal to epsilon but it is also less than equal to r right because epsilon 1 is the min smaller of the two so if norm x is less than equal to epsilon 1 it is definitely less than equal to both of them right so i have just i have actually proved that by this analysis that norm x is going to remain within r so i am going to stay within the r ball just by virtue of this 
why do I get this for free, seemingly for free, without actually aiming to prove this, is because I have semi-definiteness, negative semi-definiteness. Yeah? So, wherever I start, I do not necessarily decay, but I do not necessarily explode. Not necessarily, I definitely do not explode. Okay? So, that is what, that is where I get that my, if I start in the appropriate delta ball, I am not just guaranteeing that I will uh, be within the epsilon ball, I am also guaranteeing I will be within the R ball. That is the whole point of choosing epsilon 1, that you never escape the R ball also, because you are not allowed to. Okay? So, just by virtue of this proof, I am guaranteeing both, not just one of them. Okay? I am guaranteeing both properties.